Welcome to Ariga for Beginners. In this set of tutorials, I'm going to go over just some of the basic uh, settings, the basic uh, usages for Ariga, and uh, just how you use it generally. Um, so, to start off with Ariga installed in your palm, go ahead and click on the icon there in the Applications menu. And if you can't see it for some reason, click on your Applications button a couple times or you can come up to this, uh, this corner drop-down menu and make sure it's on All and you'll see Ariga sitting in the top there. So I'll click on it and when you first open Ariga, it will come up with the license agreement and ask you if you agree. So go ahead and click I agree. And uh, then you choose whether you want to work in feet or meters, depending on what you're used to. So I'm going to select feet. And then it opens up the Ariga workspace here with a few sample caves. So we're going to begin by creating a new cave. So to do that, down here in the, uh, in the bottom of the window, there's this little new cave icon. It's a little window, a little square or rectangle with a sparkly on it. Click on that and you will open the uh, the new cave settings or setup menu. So let's give our cave a name. We'll call this test cave and we'll give it a category. Categories, what those are, they're like folders that you can save your cave files in. So if you've got a project with multiple caves then you probably want to have a folder where you're going to store and work on those caves. So I'm going to go to edit categories, create a new category and we're going to call this one test project click OK and OK again and now in my category I see my test project come up and I'm now going to save this this cave file in the test project so you can decide whether you want it to be read only or public um, length set those your feet uh, feet or meters you can set your angles slopes zero uh, whether you want that level up and down and uh, and then your target is the software that you use on your PC um, in my case I'm using compass if you're using uh, something like on station or walls then you can select that so let's do compass position this is our GPS position I use UTM and our datum uh, you can use WGS 1984 as the default, which is a good default, or if you have a specific datum like NAD 27 CONUS, then you select that. Then you can go into the Stations tab and click here, and this is where we set up how our stations are going to be formatted. If I'm using an A1, A2, A3 type station, then I want it on the 8 character and little a to z, capital A to z, and 0 to 9. If I'm using like a 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, then I'll click on this 4.4 and make that 0 to 9 and 0 to 9 or whatever you choose to use as uh, as your station setup. So let's go back to 8 character there. And then also down here you've got your go to next session button. These two arrows that will show in Ariga, if you click on those, either they'll take you to the next session or the next uh, survey, whatever you have selected in this menu and auto incrementation we're just going to leave it as add one so now we'll go to compute computations and uh, set our scale if my scale is one inch equals 20 feet I'm not going to enter 20 here I'm going to enter one inch equals 240 inches because that's how many inches are in 20 feet so it's one inch equals 240 inches or 12 times 10 or 12 times 20 feet and um, and then our maximum closure error is going to be one feet. If it doesn't close within one foot, it'll give me a, a warning. It'll show me where that problem is at. Um, you can also enter your deviation and then the station on which you're doing your geo reference, altitude reference, and origin right here in these fields. So now we'll go into our map, and this is where we set up our grid. So on my grid paper, since I'm using one inch equals 20 feet, then the bigger squares represent 10 feet so I'm going to set it as 10 feet right here and uh, and then go ahead and hit OK when we finished setting up that section so now it it took me into my shot window but then I jumped into this session window and what a session is it's kind of like a survey so it, each time you go into the cave and have if you had multiple survey groups then you want to set up a session for each group that way if someone were to realize an error afterwards that their compass was always two degrees off you could change that in here and it would affect every shot that was done during that survey so we're gonna give our session a name and we'll call it A because we're doing the A survey and we're using tape 
as opposed to top topo fill or range finder, and we're doing it in feet. Um, you can select all of the settings for your instruments. If you have a foresight instrument or a backside instrument, that's your set two here, and you can set specifications for those. Also, under your shots is where you can choose to have back sights. We're at ignore back sights right now. If I want to show them, then I can do that. If I want to, sh to store them or show and store them, this is recording your back sights. You can do that as well. And that's for both your azimuth and your slope. So I'm going to click on show. And uh, you can set your deviation, whether you want your passage sizes to be on the start or the end station. And once you've got that set up, that's you're ready on the first session. You can go ahead and click save and done. And it takes us into the shot window where we can start entering information and collecting our survey data.